Good evening, I'm Mehdi Hassan. A new winter storm is spreading snow, sleet and rain across Texas. That is on top of the misery that already exists there and the death toll is rising from the first devastating storm that has left millions without power. I want to start tonight though by asking this related question. Does this big E mean anything to you? Here's a different shot of it lit up in color. It was, of course, the logo of the Enron Corporation based in Houston, Texas, the notorious firm that collapsed 20 years ago in a massive fraud and corruption scandal. This man, Jeffrey Skilling, went to prison for 14 years for his role in the collapse. He was convicted on 19 counts of conspiracy, securities fraud, insider trading and lying to auditors. Enron was an energy firm, but it didn't generate any energy. The company realized it could make more money speculating on energy contracts than by actually producing electricity to do that its executives realized they needed a few things. Mainly, they needed companies with which to trade and they needed to eliminate pesky government oversight. Enter the Texas legislature two decades ago with heavy lobbying from Enron, translation with arm twisting and sweet talking and big donations from Enron, Texas amended its entire Public Utilities Act. Hundreds of amendments just like this one, crossed out, deregulated, gone. And the governor at the time, George W. Bush, signed that bill into law. And as a result, where once Texas had one public utility providing energy, in some parts of the state, there are now dozens. Look at them. Providing energy that's funneled from the power plants to Texas's very own electrical grid. There's one power grid for the eastern states, one for the western states, and one just for Texas. Designed that way and leaving Texas struggling on its own tonight due to a distrust of federal interference. But hey, there's always the lower prices of deregulation, right? Because wasn't that the promise? With so many companies to pick and choose from, free market competition, prices would go down for Texans. Everybody gets cheap electricity, everybody wins. Well, for one thing, people in Texas are suffering tonight. The power grid operated by Texas, uh, overseen by an agency called ERCOT, was not prepared to handle a storm of this magnitude. But hey, Texas is going it alone. No pesky regulation or interference. Uh, worth noting, the chair and vice chair of ERCOT's board, they don't even live in Texas. As the Washington Post puts it, in the name of deregulation and free markets, critics say Texas has created an electric grid that puts an emphasis on cheap prices over reliable service. But here's the other thing. Electricity isn't always cheaper. Rates in Texas on any given day can vary widely. It's like having a floating rate mortgage. The temporary train wreck of what's happening in Texas has seen the wholesale price of electricity in Houston go from $22 a megawatt hour to around $9,000. $9,000. One electric company is even warning its customers they might want to find another provider stat before their next shocker of a bill comes due. But one person believes Texans are willing to pay any price, at least in theory. Here's the former governor of Texas, Rick Perry, who was also Donald Trump's energy secretary. Uh, Perry, in a comment made to Kevin McCarthy's blog uh, that was uncovered by the Houston Chronicle, said, and I quote, Texans be would be without electricity for longer than three days to keep the federal government out of their business, Governor Perry said, partly rhetorically. Try not to let whatever the crisis of the day take your eye off having a resilient grid that keeps America safe personally, economically and strategically. I'm willing to bet those comments by Rick Perry were made in a location with heat, power and running water. There's also the failure of local government. This is what happened in a Texas town called Colorado City when they turned to the mayor for help. He told them basically to fend for themselves. Quote, no one owes you or your family anything, he wrote on Tuesday in a Facebook post that has since been deleted. I'm sick and tired of people looking for a damn handout charming. The mayor resigned and said his words could have been better chosen, but he didn't back away from the underlying sentiment. Because that is the great underpinning of conservatism and libertarianism, right? That big government is bad. It's the enemy of liberty. All it does is take your taxes, takes your paycheck, takes your freedoms. Yet the second things go wrong, and make no mistake, things are going deadly, disastrously wrong in Texas. The same folks who decry big government they look for help. They hypocritically want a bailout. But a lot of people are pointing out that you voted against aid for Sandy after that catastrophic, catastrophic storm up in the Northeast, that package back in 2012. Uh, and they're, they're pointing at you and saying you're asking for money now when you weren't willing to help the people in the Northeast. What do you have to say to them? Yeah. 
Well, you know, look, there's time for political sniping later. I think our focus really needs to be on this sniping, crisis Senator. and this disaster. These are people who needed money and who needed funding right after that storm. I covered those people. Many of them, just like those in Houston, lost absolutely everything they owned. Well, Katie, Katie, of course that's right, and, and the accurate thing to say is that I and a number of others enthusiastically and emphatically supported hurricane relief for Sandy. Ah, yes, Ted Cruz, a man who hypocritically also took paid sick leave during COVID quarantine, yet voted in 2015 against paid sick leave. That's the unspoken secret that these so-called conservative politicians are happy with government services and with bailouts so long as they get to restrict them to themselves and their own cronies. When the truth is, everyone deserves them. When the truth is, government, both big and small, already permeates every aspect of American life, mostly for the better. For things like clean air and clean water, for highways, for seat belts, for food inspections, for safe medicines, for workplace safety laws, for mail, for zoning laws, for sidewalks, and yes, for FEMA which right now is sending generators, water and blankets to Texas because the Texas government cannot maintain its own power. Without good government, things fall apart. People in Houston, the fourth biggest city in the country, are being advised to boil water tonight, though it's unclear how they're supposed to do that if they don't have electricity. 13 children in Fort Worth, Texas, have been treated for carbon monoxide poisoning. In one county, there were 77 ambulance calls for hypothermia. If the last year, the last four years have taught us anything, please let it be the lesson that government matters. And it therefore makes sense to elect people who believe in government, who are able to and actually want to govern rather than just fight pointless culture wars. For more, let's talk to Democratic Congressman Joaquin Castro, who represents San Antonio, Texas. You may also recall he was one of the impeachment managers from last week's second impeachment trial of Donald Trump. He joins us over the phone because of the storm and the power issues where he is. Uh, Congressman, thank you for joining us on the show tonight. How are the people of your district and across the state faring tonight? What do they need? Well, well it's been very difficult. Um, you know, the storm hit the entire state and it's a state with state leaders who didn't prepare for this kind of uh, hit. And uh, so a lot of people are still without electricity. You have some neighborhoods that have been without power for two days now and others that have been barely touched. Uh, you've got vulnerable people who are finding it hard to get medicine and food. Uh, a lot of the major cities have now issued uh, notices to boil water, but there's no electricity, so people can't boil the water. Uh, even if they have it. And so it's a very dangerous situation still in Texas all around. And in, in South Central Texas, we're expecting another deep freeze tonight and about a 50% chance of ice and snow tomorrow. Uh, so you, you could start a, basically another lethal cycle here pretty soon. It's horrific just thinking about what another cycle will look like for the people there. Uh, we know that Rick Perry, former governor of your state, suggested Texans would be willing to live without electricity to keep the federal government out of Texas. Uh, in March, uh, last March, well, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick suggested that seniors needed to be willing to die to get the Texas economy going again. In your experience, is that really true of Texans? That's how much they hate government, regulation, rules? This is what rugged individualism and the frontier mentality means? Really? But, you know, unfortunately, in Texas for the last few decades, you've had state Republican leaders who've gotten very spoiled winning election after election in what has been a, a quote-unquote red state. It's getting more competitive now, but it was solidly Republican for a long time. And because of that, they, they sold really this this ideology and this tagline uh, about less government, no government interference. Uh, but at the same time, you know, those taglines work a lot better in theory than in practice. And so they didn't weatherize and didn't prepare the state's electrical grid. You know, there was a major storm event in 2011. And after that, the federal government made practical recommendations uh, to the state to make sure that it wouldn't happen again. Those recommendations, for the most part, were not implemented as they should have been. Uh, and so here we are in 2021. And, you know, throughout the years, people like Rick Perry and Greg Abbott and others have basically installed a lot of people who are their political friends, big contributors and donors yes. in important positions. 
um, and those are the people that oversee the state, really without a, a deep concern for the people, but I think a greater concern for their own pockets. Uh, indeed. Congressman, as I understand it, and like many, I've had to take a crash course in the Texas energy market in the last couple of days. Your city of San Antonio escapes a lot of the chaos of the Texas system and remains better regulated. Has that helped your constituents when it comes to avoiding things like $9,000 bills uh, from these storms? Yeah, tech, San Antonio and I believe Austin are the two big um, municipally owned utilities. Uh, and so, you know, in terms of price, in terms of reliability, they've been fairly good. But this thing has just hit everybody uh, across the board pretty yeah. hard. Um, and, you know, in my house, we've been without power going on 48 hours now. Um, you know, and, and others have been without water for a few days now. Wow. That, Wow. And we're hearing tonight, Congressman, the governor of Texas has just ordered natural gas producers uh, to stop shipping natural gas outside the state. Already there have been serious concerns about natural gas production slowdowns because of the weather. Uh, is this supply crisis about to spread beyond Texas's borders, perhaps? I think so. I think you're going to see a kind of domino effect where it's going to start to affect other markets. Um, and what we also start to see, according to reports at least for the last few days, is that there's, it looked like there started to be price gouging by some of these suppliers. And you, you, know, you quoted some of the prices in your opening. And you know, that's the other thing, is that the, the Republican conservative government has been very laissez-faire about uh, intervening when, when private actors, private businesses, actually start price gouging people. Yeah, of course they have. Uh... It's just depressing to watch this happening in slow motion car crash. Uh, Congressman, switching gear a bit, Donald Trump has given his first interview since the insurrection and since his acquittal uh, on Fox News today. Where else? And he repeated the lie that he won the election. Uh, in the face of those comments that he hasn't learned a thing, of course, do you have any regrets at all that you and your team are not deposing witnesses right now that the trial isn't still underway? Well, you can imagine. I mean, there was a very um, there was a debate about it and how to proceed. And at the end of the day, as Jamie Raskin said, um, everybody was convinced that it. No matter the number of witnesses, uh, you've got Republicans who are putting their careers and their allegiance to Donald Trump over the country, and that was the fundamental problem. Is even with all of that evidence, and you saw it, Matthew, and everybody saw it, compelling evidence yeah. about Donald Trump's actions. Yes. These guys were unwilling to be moved, um, you know, and, and so, yeah, I mean, that, that's a fundamental problem. And as I said in my remark, Donald Trump basically left everybody at the Capitol for dead. He left everybody at the Capitol yeah. for dead. He was derelict in his duty and refused to send help, even when he knew Mike Pence, Nancy Pelosi, and others were being threatened by this mob. It speaks volumes about the Republican Party in the Senate that having been left for dead, 43 of them still voted to acquit the man who left them for dead. Uh, one last question. Do you think there'll ever be any kind of accountability for Donald Trump, maybe in the courts, based on the evidence all of you presented, or for other alleged crimes? Yeah, I sure hope so. I think that there's, there's plenty of things for prosecutors in different parts of the country and perhaps even the Justice Department to look into. Uh, and then I do hope that there will be a commission set up that can take testimony and evidence about what happened uh, leading up to and on January 6th. We can only hope. Congressman Joaquin Castro, thank you so much for taking time out in the middle of all this uh, craziness and chaos in Texas. Please do stay safe. Uh, we appreciate your time. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.